All right, moving on to the other two problems we have. These are a bit harder because they have leading coefficients for both factor sets. Now, let's continue then with the same format. We're going to find we're going to factor the denominator, find the common factor in both of them and complete the factor set so that we can comp complete the LCD and join the fractions together. So here the first step we're going to take is factoring out the greatest common factor. We notice they all have multiples of 4 in the head in the front of them, so we're going to factor that out. So we'll keep the 5x on top, going to factor the 4 out, and we're left with x squared plus 3x's plus 2, which is easily factorable. And here we have 4 over x plus 1, and here we see this is going to continue factoring. So we have 5x on top, we have a 4, we put an x inside one, an x inside the other. Since it ends with a plus, both terms get a plus because the middle term is positive and the factors of 2 that add up to 3 are just 2 and 1 and here we see the x plus 1 which is under the 4 and all we need to complete the LCD here is a 4 and x plus 2 so we're going to multiply by 4 and x plus 2 and here we're going to multiply by 4 and x plus 2 so now let's join these denominators together and get one denominator we have 4 x plus 2 and x plus 1 in the numerator we have 5x's take away 4 times 4 times x plus 2. Now we can just rewrite this first multiplication of 4 times 4 and put a 16 because they are actually multiplying and we're going to have to distribute this term with the negative into these. So now we have 5x's and then we have negative 16x's negative 32. Now all of this is over 4 times x plus 2 and x plus 1. And finally our final result for this is going to be negative 7x, uh, negative 9x's, actually negative 11x's, I'm sorry about that, negative 11x's minus 32, and this is over 4 times x plus 2 times x plus 1. There's our solution for this one. Now let's get on to the last problem here, number 5. Now number 5 is a bit more challenging than even this one is, because this had a greatest common factor, but here there is no greatest common factor. And what this involves is figuring out the terms that add up to the middle term. Now the difficult part about this is first, we know the 3 is a prime number, so this should not be so difficult through trial and error. So what we're going to do is then factor this. So let's put the 7x's above it, and in parentheses here I'm going to start this off by putting 3x's and an x here, because the only way to make 3x squared is simply by having x times 3x's. And that's the only way to make a prime number, which is 3. However, the last term here is positive 8. To make a positive number, we know it's a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus. The middle term also is negative. So we know the two signs inside the parentheses are also going to be negative because the third term is positive, and it takes the signs for the parentheses set of the middle term. Now, we're looking for the two numbers that multiply to make the middle term equal negative 10. So when I place a number here and a number here, the products will give me negative 10 x's. So we're going to troubleshoot this with trial and error, right? So we have 3 x's and we have 1 x. We have two negative terms and the only possible solutions for an 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4, 4 and 2, or 8 and 1. Now it's one of these combinations here that are going to fit in here and create a perfect 10. So let's start with 1 and 8, right? 1 and 8 make negative x, and this and this make negative 24 x's. Way too big for us. This is negative 25 x's. Way too large for us, 1 and 8. That doesn't work. Let's start over. 2 and 4 now. With 2 and 4 we make negative 2 x's, 3 and negative 4 is negative 12 x's, this is negative 14 x's, way too large, negative 14. So we're going to get rid of those 2 and 4 now, we're going to move on to the next set, which is 4 and 2. Now here we get negative 4 x's, and this with this make negative 6 x's, this is perfect, negative 10 x's. We found our solution set right here. So we're going to put the 4 in, we're going to put the 2 in, and we're done. So let's continue this problem after factoring, right? 
And don't be afraid to take a scrap sheet of paper and put your factoring on the side. Try to keep your workspace clean. The neater this looks, the easier it is to retain. The more clutter you put on your sheets, the harder it is it's going to be to do this or even like comprehend what you're doing. So keep a neat workspace, you know. So now to complete the LCD, we need 3x minus 4 on the top and bottom over here so we can have the same denominator over here. So we're going to put the 3x take away 4 here. 3x take away 4, and we're going to combine the numerators, and the denominators become 1 in unison. So we have 7x minus 2 times 3x is take away 4. And on the bottom here, we have just one single denominator, which is the common for both of them. Now we're going to distribute this 2. We're going to leave the 7x's alone here because it's a leading term. Negative 2 times 3x's give us negative 6x's. Negative 2 by 4 gives us positive 8. The denominator here again, 3x minus 4, and x minus 2. So now we just subtract 7x's, take away 6x's, give us 1x's, think of them as objects. And we have x plus 8 over 3x, take away 4, and x minus 2. And that's our solution. Thank you.